Six months after a central Kentucky toddler's death, police have now charged her step-grandmother with murder. What we've learned about the case. WKYT is tracking shoplifting trends around Kentucky. Our investigators say the crime hurts you during the holidays. Christmas came early for some eastern Kentucky elementary school students, all thanks to a secret Santa. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. We begin tonight with a breaking news alert out of northern Kentucky. Police say that someone stole a car from a Florence gas station with a 20-day-old baby inside. And just minutes ago, Kentucky State Police issued an Amber Alert. We just received a picture of that missing baby, Henry Flores. Police say he is wearing a white onesie and gray pants. Police say he was inside a blue 2001 Volkswagen Passat. The car was stolen from a Speedway gas station on US 42, not far from Interstate 75. Florence police say this surveillance video shows the theft. They say the car was last seen heading towards Interstate 75. Police do not have any information about the suspect, but they say the car has a Kentucky license plate of 000 PZR. We will continue to track the story on WKYT.com and we'll pass along any updates as we receive them. For nearly six months, police have been trying to figure out what led to a Boyle County toddler's death, and now they have charged her step grandmother with murder. Three year old Alexa Rayleigh died in June after investigators say she suffered some injuries to her abdomen. WKYT's Victor Puente is tracking the new developments in this case. It's our top story at six. It's been a little more than six months since three year old Alexa Rayleigh was brought to a Danville hospital. Police say she was unresponsive. She was flown to UK hospital but died that evening. Now her step grandmother has been charged with murder. 40 year old Shiloh Rayleigh was arrested this afternoon. When Alexa died, state police said it appeared she'd been assaulted with blunt force trauma to her abdomen. Danville police haven't commented on the arrest. I spoke to Shiloh's husband this afternoon after she'd been arrested. He said they had no comment on the charges and referred me to their attorney. Alexa was staying with her father in Boyle County when she died. Her mother, Jessica Young, lives in Lexington. The two had a joint custody arrangement. Young had a statement regarding the arrest. First, she thanked everyone who had supported her family since Alexa died on June 23rd. Then she said, quote, Lexi, you are our moon and stars, our every breath. We love you always and may justice and peace come strong and swiftly. You are my heart. Stay with me. Shiloh Rayleigh is in the Boyle County Detention Center. Her bond has not been set. In Boyle County, Victor Puente, WKYT. When Alexa died, Danville police told WKYT they were already working another investigation involving the toddler. Tonight, we are tracking the investigation into a disturbing discovery along a Garrett County road. The Lost and Found Pets of Lexington Facebook page is now offering a $1,000 reward for information leading to the arrest in the deaths of three puppies. Organizers of the page say the puppies were found mutilated along Highway 753. Garrett County Animal Control is investigating this case. Tonight, a central Kentucky gas station is still closed after an SUV crashed right into the building. It happened last night at a Valero at US 27 in Stanford. The crash left a huge hole on the side of the building and even caused damage inside. Phil Pendleton tells us surveillance video shows the crash. Russell's Valero is usually a busy place, and a bunch of customers had just left the Stanford convenience store. You can see the car coming around. Seconds later, you see the car almost stop, then quickly speed up and come into the store. The whole front of the store, as you can see, was gone. And there was a car that was sitting right here. Inside that car was a woman who police say hit the gas instead of the brakes. She seemed to be okay, and we're thankful to the Lord for that. And inside, it's still a mess, closed to customers. Uh, there are certain uh, hoops that have to be jumped through. There are certain things that have to be done. Maybe we can open up with uh, hinges on the plywood for now. The owners tell me this is a very important time of the year for many businesses, and they say they want to make sure they get this store fixed and reopened just as soon as possible. It's a crucial time of the year for any retailer, and, and to be shut down is is not a very good thing. The owners say they hope to reopen the store in a couple of days. In Lincoln County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. 
And no one was injured. Stanford police tell us they worked a similar crash nearly a year ago when a driver hit the gas pedal instead of the brakes and ran into a restaurant. It has been another cold and dreary day across Kentucky, and you may notice a few flurries tonight. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bayless shows us what he is tracking on the first alert defender. Hi, Chris. Hi, Amber. A lot of clouds showing up. What else is new there? And we are getting a couple of snow flurry reports coming out of parts of northern Kentucky, especially here in Lexington. It is a cloudy and a cold evening for folks who are out doing a little Christmas shopping at the Hamburg Pavilion area. You see nothing but brake lights showing up there in the distance. 31 degrees Lexington. Winds are calm, so that is certainly some good news. Not really talking about a wind chill. We look at the actual thermometers that are at or below freezing in most areas. Already some upper 20s showing up. Throw the winds into the mix and it really doesn't move very much at all. Here is live first alert defender. A little spotty sprinkle or flurry into southern Kentucky. Watching a little round of some light snows and flurries targeting parts of Northern Kentucky coming out of southern parts of Indiana. And again, anyone is fair game to see a snowflake or two uh, going in front of the car headlights over the next few hours. Lots and lots of clouds, not only for Kentucky, but surrounding areas as well. If you're out this evening, it's a drop into the upper 20s. We'll hold there right on through 11 o'clock with mainly cloudy skies. Coming up in just a little bit, full forecast. All eyes set on Christmas week and the potential. For some Christmas Eve snows. We will break that down when I come back in less than 10 minutes. It's a common crime this time of year shoplifting. And police say thefts from stores take money right out of your wallet. WKYT's investigative team pulled shoplifting arrest numbers for Lexington. And what we found may surprise you. Investigative reporter Miranda Combs is tracking the shoplifting trend. The official description of the crime is theft by unlawful taking, but most of us know it as shoplifting. A misdemeanor mostly, but a crime. One that turned dangerous just a few days ago in Bowling Green. When an officer shot a man after employees at a local sporting goods store said the man was trying to steal a rifle. Most shoplifting cases don't escalate to that level, but the crime has a ripple effect for the economy and your wallet. That's $12 billion that is essentially lost. It's gone. It's going to the shoplifters. That's nationally, but individually, each of us lose about $400 a year to shoplifters, according to Dr. Chris Bollinger with the University of Kentucky. You take your total inventory of everything you've bought in the last year, food, clothing, and all that in retail stores, and you're paying $400 more for all of that than you would in the absence of shoplifting. And there are more shoplifters this year than last year in Lexington. From March to November, shoplifting was up in 2014 compared to 2013 for a total of 2,342 shoplifting arrests in 2014. The warmer months were the worst in May and June. If you're a retailer, I think it's probably one of your, your biggest uncontrollable costs. Bollinger says there is a lot store managers can control from utility costs to employee pay, but shoplifting is a wild card that hits the economy. Probably the best way to think about shoplifting in a lot of ways is it's kind of like a tax. A tax that's shared by both the consumer and the producer. The consumer pays a higher price and the producer gets a lower return. Retail has hands down the lowest profit margins of any industry. So retailers do what they can to stop the shoplifting. In our research, we found the Walmart in Hamburg on Greylag Way to have the most shoplifting arrests of any store in Lexington. A spokesperson for the Walmart tells us they take shoplifting very seriously and says they are good at catching shoplifters. And the numbers prove it. So far this year, Walmart on Greylag Way had 391 shoplifting arrests, about 150 more arrests than were made at Fayette Mall's address this year for shoplifting. Walmart says they recently hired more security personnel. They call out Asset protection to shore up the shoplifting. But Bollinger says hiring more employees to stop shoplifting still affects your wallet. You can't push a balloon in one spot and not have it change somewhere else. And that's that's what we're talking about here. And in regard to the Hamburg area, as we mentioned, Walmart there had almost 400 shoplifting arrests this year, but Meyer in Hamburg only had about 84 arrests so far in 2014. So these are actual arrests you're talking about, not 
just incidents. Right. We're not talking about just incidents. Those could happen anywhere at any time. But Walmart has gone an extra step and really arrested mm -hmm. a lot more than the other stores in Lexington. So I guess don't mess around at Walmart is the message. Absolutely. Miranda, mm -hmm. thank you. Well, Christmas came a week early for some students at an Eastern Kentucky school. Dozens of bikes and helmets arrived at Morgan Central Elementary to be given to the students as gifts. And it's all thanks to some generous folks who live out of the state. Jim Caldwell has the story new at 6. It's Christmas time, and during this time of year, many of us find ourselves in better spirits, a little happier, and some giving even more than normal. Fifth graders at Morgan Central Elementary or on the receiving end of the given season. And uh, I know Reginald, he always told me, told me a story when he was a little boy, and he's in the fifth grade, very poor. He said he'd give anything to have a new bike. The McMiracle program was founded in Indianapolis by a couple that owned several McDonald's restaurants in that area. They gave 48 students a bicycle and a helmet for Christmas. A little early, but you can tell by the looks on their faces, they don't mind. There's no other feeling than that to see the faces of the children when they receive their bikes. They came to help the West Liberty area after the March 2nd tornadoes of 2012. They sent supplies to the area, and this time they just wanted to make sure that these students were getting along very well this Christmas. In fact, I was here two years ago when a tornado okay. came through this area, and they donated supplies and stuff for that. And uh, so they just wanted to think, well, this is time to maybe bring McMurkle here. It came as a total surprise to those involved. It's just an incredibly generous act that we were definitely not expecting. And it's been a wonderful reminder about what the Christmas season's all about. And surprises are usually a pretty good thing. That's all I wanted was rain, and I got it. <laughs> In West Liberty, I'm WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell. Oh, those precious smiles. The faith-based corporation has given away more than 1,000 bikes and helmets just this year.